Uh, <laughs> good evening, fellow Toastmasters, and welcome guests, or guests welcome and Toastmasters fellow evening good. This is our backwards meeting. So it goes pretty bad when we go forward. So God knows what it's going to be like when we go backwards today, but we're going to have some fun. And I guess, I think most of our guests here are, are Toastmasters, uh, if, if not all of them. But for those that aren't, we generally have uh, all our uh, speakers and then they're evaluated and we have various roles throughout the evening. And tonight we are doing our normal agenda, but we're going backwards. So the speakers are being evaluated before they speak. Make sense? No? Okay. <laughs> That's what we're doing. So I know we've got a lot of uh, guests here this evening. So, and usually at the start, at the end of uh, the meeting, we have uh, a few words from any of them that want to speak. So maybe as we do that at the end, we'll do that at the start. So we'll do that in a minute. So if, if anyone wants to speak up, um, you get a chance in a second. But now I'll go into uh, into role, I guess, and uh, and end the meeting. So, what an amazing evening we had today! So big thanks to Nina M for organising such a seamlessly organised event. We had such amazing speeches and table topics, an absolutely amazing general evaluation from Steve. Thanks so much for your kind words. I don't really believe you or what you were saying. I'm sure there must have been a better club president in the past other than me. Um, at this point, what I would like to do is do a, a photo for our, uh, for our social media page. So uh, I'm going to pass on to Nina P, who is going to uh, do the screenshot. So everyone, uh, best, best smiles, please. Well, I'll just wait to find names to go away. I don't want to expose you all. But um, we just do it. Please smile. Huh? Thank you very much, Owen. So thanks, Nina. So some dates, upcoming dates uh, at our club uh, past this evening. So we have our international speech and evaluation contest on the uh, 16th of March and that's the club contest and the area contest I believe is on uh, on the 30th of March. Uh, I'm going to now do the uh, the awards for the evening so hopefully I can share my screen. <laughs> so welcome to our award section for this evening. We have a couple of educational awards, so well done to Nikki Fawahimi for getting her Motivational Strategies Level 1, well done Nikki. We have Anna Zhao, who's got her Dynamic Leadership Level 2, so well done Anna. And our awards this evening, we have our best smile for the evening, who goes to Andy Cowan. Well done, Woo! Andy. Amazing smile you have behind the beard. Keep it going. Our best background for the evening goes to Kevin Baggs. Amazing background that you will have for the rest of the evening. Our best jazz hands for the evening goes to Mark Richardson. So I'm really looking forward to Mark's jazz hands throughout the evening. As <laughs> enthusiastic. <laughs> 
Uh, okay, so on that note, as I said before, we usually have uh, some uh, uh, input from our guests at the end of the meeting. So if any of the guests want to speak now, uh, please raise your hand. Sorry, yeah, uh, what's your seahorse? Sorry, what's your name? Sorry, me. Yes, please. Mickey. Okay, it's Mickey. I'm sorry. Mickey. Hi, Mickey. Put it in there backwards. It's Michelle, but oh, my name is oh, Mickey. Yeah. And I felt we were friendly, so you can call me Mickey. Okay, Thank you Mickey. so much for having me. This was such an amazing meeting. You are an outstanding club. <laughs> I am so pleased with the assiduous work that must have gone into this meeting. Thank you so much for having me. Great. Thank you, Mickey. Anyone else? Mandy? This was a very, very different meeting, I have to say. I've not seen anything like it. I might even consider taking it back to my club. It's good to see old friends and make new ones. I have to say the quality of your speeches are probably not as good as ours, but you'll get there. Thank you. Thank you, Mandy, I think. Anyone else? I will, I will just hop in. Wow, 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 I can't believe it. And I'm going to have, man, Mandy, I'm gonna have to take it back to my home club and my other two clubs and say, listen what I can bring to you because of East Hurts, yay. Okay, great. Well, wow, we've really built this evening up. So uh, on that note, I will say thanks for a wonderful evening. And I will hand over to our VPE, Rebecca, who will do a uh, schedule for the next meeting. Welcome, Rebecca. Thank you very much, Paul. So as it's the end of the meeting, I will be asking if anyone, any of our members would like to volunteer for roles for our next few meetings. Our next meeting is a standard meeting, you may be pleased to hear, and we have all roles available and one speaking role, one speech role. So if anyone would like a role, please raise your hand now. Uh, Steve, then Derek, then Andy. I'll, I'll take any role, whatever you've got left over. Uh, thank Thanks. you. Derek? Same here, any surprise me. Yep. Andy? I will take potluck as well, please, Rebecca. Great, you're leaving it up to <laughs> leave it up to me. That makes it a lot easier. Um, Liz, then John. Sorry, me. Yeah, evaluator, please. Yep. Yeah. And John. I'm happy to put my name in the hat with everybody else and take potluck from Rebecca. You're really leaving yourselves up to uh, my mercy. Um, anyone else? I'm afraid everyone's on two screens. Ah, uh, Mark, then Anna. Yeah, anything you need, Rebecca. Ah. Uh, I'll go for table topics. Table topics master? Yes. Fab. Anyone else? Everyone's on two screens because my laptop screen is very small. So apologies if I'm missing anyone. Okay, wonderful. And we also have our um, club contest, as Paul mentioned, which is the second meeting in March on the 16th. So if anyone would like to do a speech and evaluation, please raise your hand. I've already got a few names down from last meeting. Uh, John, yep. I think I've already got you down for potentially both, but definitely an aval. Uh, Peter, yep. Happy to do. Okay, you might end up doing both. Uh, anyone else? Okay. Oh, Andy, yep. May I go for the evaluation contest, please? Yes, you may. Okay, wonderful. If that's everyone, I will email out with any further available roles in the coming week. Thank you. And I will hand back to the Toastmaster. Hey, thank you, Rebecca. Thank you. Um, I'm looking forward to another great meeting on the 2nd of March. Uh, talking about great meetings, uh, I'm ready to welcome to the stage our general evaluator for for today, uh, who's going to tell us uh, how wonderful this meeting has been. So please join me in welcoming 
Steve Campion, our general evaluator. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, very welcome guests. Derek is right, it has been an amazing meeting. And I think of the words of Ralph Smedley, who founded Toastmasters. He said, we learn best in moments of enjoyment. And this evening, I personally learned a heck of a lot and I've enjoyed every single moment. I have limited time in which to provide my feedback, but I have made some notes about most, if not all of the role holders this evening. And I'd like to provide that feedback now. When Paul opened the meeting, he was very warm. He was very welcoming. I liked the way that he welcomed our guests and pointed out to our guests that they may be invited to speak at the end of the meeting. I thought that was very nicely done indeed. And I also appreciated how he called particular attention to Elizabeth Jordan, who I see on the screen as our district public relations manager and welcomed her to the meeting. I have to say, I do think Paul is one of the best presidents we've had this year. So very well done. Very well done. If I could make a suggestion, when introducing the Toastmaster at the beginning, it's worth helping the audience feel comfortable with the caliber and skill of the Toastmasters. So say something nice about them rather than just hold on to your hats because it's Derek. I think that's going to you know, really help set the tone. Derek kept us working very nicely to time, gave very clear introductions. I always like the way that Derek speaks, and he introduced each person extremely well. I would suggest to really shine as a Toastmaster of the evening, check the pronunciation of people's names. It can be a little difficult. And there were a few moments this evening where I heard the introduction of, I think it was Peter, Peter, forgive me if I mispronounced that, but I, I kept hearing it as Patrick or something. So I think there's a subtlety in, in the name there, but very well done throughout this evening. Thank you. Nina then kicked off with a joke, which, I really enjoyed when she actually started speaking it. I did think it would have been a good idea to have the joke text in front of her rather than have to run around the house and try and find it before the meeting to get going. But I very much enjoyed the joke and it, it set us up for success. So thank you very much, Nina. We had Nikki as our grammarian. And at the end of the meeting, she gave a report that I thought showed she listened very, very carefully. She gave some good examples of rule of three that she'd heard. She gave us a great word of the day and explained how to use it. I was a little puzzled as to why when she gave her feedback on the use of the word to, of the day, she can't count in more the number of times we'd used the word lime scale. I might have missed something there, but I was also rather astonished at the number of times the word lime scale came out throughout the meeting as well. So that entertained me. Thank you. Laura was a very creative use of timing signals, uh, gave a concise report, and maybe as a suggestion for next time, Laura, when giving your timing report, suggest not just the timing, but how long the person should have spoken for before in that session as well. That would be extremely helpful. Thank you. Liz was our our, our, our um counter. She explained the role extremely well. She's clearly very experienced in this. And I liked how she reported the number of times people used so at the beginning of a sentence as well. That was very good. Looking at the agenda, normally the R counter doesn't have much time to give a report, but this time has three minutes. And I appreciated how Liz used all of that time that she had available. Paul was our table topics evaluator listened very attentively and picked up on that great metaphor that the first table topic speaker used. I, I liked how, how Paul was observing that. When providing feedback though, just a, a little suggestion, providing feedback about body language and positioning in front of the camera, very helpful, but perhaps in demonstrating it, maybe just show the movement rather than running out of the room and running back in again, because that, that, that can interrupt things a little bit, but I love the helpful and encouraging comments. So thank you very much for that, Paul. Mark, as our table topics master, asked good questions, summarized the responses well. I wasn't sure how the question about turnips related to the overall theme. And I don't think the person answering the question did either because they did seem to talk about citrus fruit. So. I, I don't know, but you know, maybe think of different ways in the future of, of expressing the question. Our evaluators, 
all did an exceptional job, in my view, because they explained the purpose of the speech very well. They introduced their spe the, the, the topic, they explained the purpose of the speech and what they were listening out for. When Kevin was evaluating John's speech, I thought there was a great, great recommendation about the use of the rule of three. I thought it was an exceptional thing. Uh, personally, maybe personal style, I wouldn't really have commented about the clothes that the speaker was wearing, but Kevin obviously thought it appropriate. I didn't personally think it was that bad, but I, I thought that was good. But I, I did, maybe Kevin was distracted by his overwhelming love for Liz. I, I don't know what, you know, it could have been causing that, but I liked how he related it back to the objectives of the speech. Nina evaluating Rebecca was constructive as ever, gave a great suggestion and demonstration about vocal variety. And I think when you're providing feedback, it's not just to say something, demonstrating the benefit of it can be extremely helpful and a very concise report, which I enjoyed. And then finally, Peter, I had as a note, evaluating Anna. I liked the way that Peter thanked the speaker, thanked the speaker so wonderfully effusively. Um, and how he had an appropriate prop to hand, I will never know, but it really helped with his evaluation. I guess that all comes from presentation. So thank you all very much indeed for an exceptional meeting. Like I say, I loved every minute, learned a lot, and I look forward to our next meeting. Thank you very much, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you very much, Steve. Uh, comprehensive as ever. Thank you so much. Uh, fellow Toastmasters, most welcome guest, I would like to bring to the stage our grammarian for this evening, uh, Nikki. Um, I'm looking forward to her report uh, because you know, a lot of people use the word of the day, assiduous, quite, quite, a, quite a number of people. So I was really impressed with that. And there were some very eloquent uh, speeches as well. So. Nikki, please enlighten us. How, how did we do from a grammarian's point of view? Nikki. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and most welcome guests. I am pleased to give you the report of the day. Thank you all. It was very nice to hear everyone use, most people use the word of the day as CDS. And as we can see, it is helpful in enabling us to describe our speeches. I'm hoping that you can all see me with my assiduous. As we've used the word, I think we no longer need the word up on the screen. Okay, I think I've removed that down. Okay, I will also tell us some of the beautiful language I heard from most of our speakers tonight. First of all, I would start with John. John used beautiful language today in telling us about Kevin's choices. He used the rule of three in explaining, particularly likes the words life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. I think that was great in telling us about the story which he was expressing. I particularly also liked um, Liz, when she gave her evaluator's report, how she started off with a very hearty praise. And that she thought the speech she evaluated went. I'd also like to commend the table topic speakers, even though we know how, uh, how they had to think on the spot, but I could see very good use of metaphors and similes in their speeches. I don't know why, probably because of the lime scale of last week, there was a lot of lime scales in the table topics today, which was quite calcified in my memory again. Also, Steve used some colorful words like fissify when he gave his report. Also, I can see in the table topics as well, quite interesting to note that the word of the day was widely used. Also, just checking, making sure I've got all my notes so that we can all see the beautiful job everyone did. 
Rebecca, in her speech, made use of, in describing how planning works, she says it takes real planning to organize this type of chaos. And she said, if it's easy, that means you must be doing it wrong. Nina was very expressive when explaining how much she felt that Rebecca had put in a lot of effort. So she used the word of the day assiduous twice in her report. Kevin, in his evaluation, used a beautiful phrase saying, life is like a box of chocolates. And I thought that was very interesting as I like chocolate myself. And as you can see, the word assiduous has been used many times, both by our table topic users and our guests. And it's very helpful in helping us convey our message. And I hope we all use it a lot more often. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you very much, Nina. Some great observations, uh, very perceptive of you all across the board. Thank you. Fellow Toastmasters, most welcome guest. Uh, this is the part that I don't enjoy the most. This is the Ahem counter. Uh, but hey, you know, rules are rules. So I'd like you to join me to welcome our Arham counter to the stage, Liz Burnett. Fellow uh, Toastmasters and most welcome guests, it's my pleasure to be your uh, uh, R counter this evening. It's been a pleasure to use my listening skills and assiduously. And I've been listening out for the unmentionables, the R's and the ums and the ands and the buts and the actuallys, which is a bit of a critch word as well. And I have to say that you have excelled yourselves. Uh, I'll, I'll come on to the, uh, the recommends in a moment because I'm picking up on what Steve reported back. But you have obviously, you must congratulate yourself. You have listened or always to what we suggest at Toastmasters, to think before you speak, to take that breath, to, well, if you, could, you can pause, it's okay to pause, and pauses are so good, and there's so much value in them. And we hardly had any ums, ahs, ands, buts, and I think you have, truly. I don't think I've ever been to a club that has been this good. So going to recommend, so there was an overuse of the word so, unfortunately. So I'd like you to be so careful not to use so again. Uh, it's very easy to use that word, to begin a sentence with so, and so please try and not use so. There was a profuse use of the word balderdash, and I don't know where that came from, but every speaker used balderdash, and I think it's probably in place of a swear word, so perhaps it wasn't so bad after all. But I would say, apart from that, you have been absolutely brilliant. You've made my job so easy, and I'd just like to thank you for giving me such joy tonight. So, so can I hand back now to um, Toastmaster? Thank you, Liz. I'm, I'm, I'm pleased to hear that uh... We're, bit, we're getting better at the use of uh, filler words in our speeches. So that's congrats to everyone at the club. Uh, so our next role I want to bring up is Laura. She's been very assiduous, um, you know, keeping up with all the times for all the speeches. Uh, so give a warm welcome uh, to Laura, who's going to give us the timekeeper's reports. Welcome, Laura. Thank you, fellow Toastmasters and most welcome guests. I'm very pleased to give you my timekeeper's report for this evening. So I will start off with the evaluators of the speeches. And uh, as they did their very assiduous evaluations of each of the speakers. So our first, our third evaluator who evaluated Anna's speech, who was Peter Lane, did a thorough evaluation and ended up just over three minutes nicely in the amber. And our second evaluator, who is Nina, and evaluated Rebecca's speech, 
also did a thorough evaluation and also ended up nicely in the amber at just over three minutes. And then we have Kevin Baggs, who did the evaluation for John's speech. And Kevin, yours was just, just going on four minutes, so you ended up just in the red. Thank you. And so now I will be moving on to the table topics and the speakers for the table topics. So the first speaker was one of our guests was Mandy Davis. And so thank you, Mandy, for your, your table topics, which was ended up just over one minute. And that was nicely in the green. The second table topics was Margarita. And Margarita, yours was also just over one minute and you ended up in the green. Our third table topics was Kartik. And Kartik, yours was, your table topics was just over a minute and a half. So yours ended in the amber. And then another, our next guest was Emma Painter. And yours ended up just under two minutes. So that also ended up nicely in the amber. Uh, our next table topics was Cynthia Coleman and yours was just under a minute and a half. So that ended up in the green. And then our last table topics was Andy and that was just over a minute and a half also in the amber. And that concludes my timing report. Thank you very much. I'll hand back to you, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Laura. Thank you so much. So let's keep things moving on. Our next speaker is our topics evaluator. We all know uh, it's the most challenging role uh, at, the, at the table uh, at the Toastmasters Club. I saw, you know, Paul scribbling away all evening. Uh, so I'm looking forward to his report. So let's give a warm welcome to our president, Paul Bayliss, to give us his report on the topic table topics. Paul. Thank you, Derek. Uh, a really good table topics session this evening. Uh, we've had six table topics tonight. And what I particularly paid interest to in these table topics is something that I always find a very, very useful skill in table topics is the delay tactic, the thinking time at the start of the table topic. And I'll, I'll do that for each, each uh, table topic that went through today. So the first table topic was Mandy. And Mandy's delay tactic. I'm not sure what you were doing, Mandy, but it, it sounded like you were chanting about something at the start of your table topic. Um, and I'm not sure if you were praying or chanting or whatnot, but uh, anyway, you it, it lasted for about 10, 15 seconds. And, uh, it was, it was certainly a very uh, original way to, of, a, of a delay tactic. So uh, it was really, really good, however, how you managed to, managed to end up talking about pink elephants. Um, and the other thing I noticed where you were, you were swinging a lot in your, in your table topic, which I, and I've seen you speak a few times, but I've never seen you do that before. But other than that, it was a very funny table topic and uh, well done, well delivered. A table second table topic this evening was Margarita. And Margarita's delay tactic was the classic Zoom fake tech issues. Sorry, I can't hear you. Camera's not working, something, something. But I think it was fake. I wasn't sure she did so well, but she recovered. She did start winking at all the audience at, at some point, but she did do a, a, an amazing heartwarming story as she normally does. And it was uh, well delivered as a table topic. So well done, Margarita. Kartik, I believe he's here. His camera's not on. It was on before. And his delay tactic was something that actually happened previously at East Heart Speakers when we did in person in the Salisbury Arms. And this happened and it's, it's happened twice now. So. I don't know, we've got these mysterious spiders that hang in the ceiling and drop down in table topic session and land on our shoulders. It did happen. It happened to Anna in the cells we arms. It happened to Kartik tonight, but it's a fantastic delay tactic. Um, 
He also had a habit, though. Uh, this is a recommend for Carter. He had a habit of laughing at his own jokes. So maybe what that's probably a, a, an area to uh, to uh, to uh, to address for for Kartik. He did tell us again about his favorite book, which is Thinking Fast and Slow, which is always a good lesson for all of us. So there's a good anecdote in there, I'm sure. Uh, Emma, Emma, her delay tactic was she pretended to get the table topic out of her filing cabinet, which is behind her. Uh, and then she talked so fast that I couldn't exactly hear what she was saying. And she also ran out the room as well. And she ran back. It was it was all a bit random, and I'm not I'm not sure. Uh, uh, are you okay, Emma? Uh, Cynthia, Cynthia's delay tactic. Again, I've not seen this one before. But she started singing. She sang. She just started singing. She came and started singing. Uh, and then midway, she was so impressed with her own speech. She started doing her own jazz hands for to, applauding herself. I mean, we, we really do enjoy ourselves at East Heart Speakers, I must admit. But again, a great, a great uh, table topic from Cynthia. And finally, Andy Cowan. So Andy started with his great smile, the smile of the evening. And then he did a very dramatic pause. While he thought of what to say. And it was such a dramatic table topic. And then he just did a great impression of a dog. I'm not sure where that came from. It was a bit random, but it worked. He delivered, he set it off. But all in all, a very good table topic session. And I think I'm gonna hand over now to our table topics master, Mark, but I might be wrong. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll take it over from here, Paul. Okay, sorry. Great, great job. Great job. Uh, jazz hands, please. Great, some great observations. Well, well done. Um, I would like to then invite Mark uh, Richardson, who is a table topics master. And, and Mark said he has some very original table topics theme for this evening. So I'm really looking forward to what that can be. Uh, so Fellow Toastmasters, most welcome guests. Let's put our hands together for Mark Richardson. Uh, and on that slightly unusual note, then I'll end our table topics tonight. You've all been both assiduous and wonderful. So well done, everyone. Thank you, Mandy, for a fascinating glimpse into your world and a particularly great use of the word turnip there. I don't think we hear enough about turnips in our meetings. So off you go, Mandy. You can do it, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. You will be able to do it, you can do it, you will be able to do it. Keep chanting, another eight seconds. Keep doing, keep doing it, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. Did you know that turnips are the most unusual vegetable you could ever possibly find? They grow in the land where the pink elephants live. I know this sounds slightly far-fetched, but it's absolutely true. If you go down the street, you know the one at the bottom of your garden, not the one next to it. If you go down there, there's the tiniest gate. I bet you didn't even know that there was a gate there. I'm sure you had no idea that there was a gate. But if you go through the gate and you bend down very short, small, and very tiny and get down low. You can see pink elephants. My dad told me that. He told me that after several bottles of beer, but he always saw pink elephants down past the gate at the bottom of the garden. He'd go down there when it was time to dig up the turnips. The turnips weren't pink. I'm sure you realize that. The turnips were a regular color. But that's all I need to say. Thank you. Uh, 
Uh, our next topic tonight then is the world of turnips and pink elephants and for this topic I would like to call on Mandy to speak. So Mandy your topic is the world of turnip and pink elephants. Next I would like to say thank you to Margarita for a really interesting table topic, uh, though you needn't have mentioned the uh, lockdown here, it is getting a little bit out of hand now, but uh, thank you anyway Margarita. Thank you, Mark. C can you hear me? I'm sorry, can you hear me? Yes. Not, not if you can hear me. So I can't hear what, what you're saying. So can you, I can't see you anymore. I'm sorry. I, I think I forgot to pay for the internet again. And I, this happens to me all the time. Like I'm just the most disorganized person you've ever seen or met in your life. So I, I think maybe I, I just need five seconds and I'll, uh, do this online operation where I pay for my internet. I'm, I'm really sorry, this is so embarrassing. I, I hate to make you wait. Okay. Anyway, I think it's coming back. Oh, actually, never mind. Sorry, sorry. It's great. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, thank you for your topic, Mark. It says it's a very, very difficult topic. It's completely boulder dash, to be honest. I, I don't know what I'm going to tell you because yeah i i think it, i don't know I, i'm completely speechless right now i don't know what i'm going to talk about but you you have me stumped i wow i think it's getting really late i i might just might as well just end right here thank you for your topic So our next topic then is internet provision and uh, how to pay for it. And uh, this one goes to Margarita. Uh, so Margarita, your topic is internet provision. <laughs> Crikey, this is crazy. Um, thanks very much, Kartik. Now, it's always nice to hear uplifting and life-affirming stories like that one. And you managed to get Limescale in there too. So, Truly amazing. Well done, Kartik. You're on mute, Kartik. Are you? Yeah. Oh, sorry. I'm having trouble with my uh, devices today. The thing is, with this, you know, sudden change from the cold weather to the hot. Where all the spiders are coming out, out, out of the life scale. See, one's just falling on my shoulder now. Oh, God. Boulder dash. Uh, anyways, uh, since I had volunteered to do table topics at the start of the meeting, I'll, uh, I'll carry on anyways. And I wanted to talk to you about a thing. Toast oh, here's another spider. Toastmasters should do anyways, which is alter the speed of when how they think and when they think as they're speaking so the idea for this really comes from david coleman's book thinking fast and thinking slow he says there are two parts to our brain one which we you know just react immediately like when spiders fall you know it's a it's a instinctive reaction to sort of dash them away and try and kill them uh on the other hand if you sit down and think about it logically spiders actually help you they trap flies and mosquitoes and other things. So if you think with your slow thinking brain, maybe it's not such a good idea to kill them after all. And, you know, that sort of brings us, uh, you know, that's a principle we should follow in life as in speeches, wherein we sit down and consider things carefully rather than just react instinctively. So uh, an important life lesson to think about is slow your thinking down, even if you get a table topic that you're not prepared for, calm down, think maybe about spiders, maybe about something else, don't react instinctively, and consider your reactions and tell people to relax as they think and see it forward. Now, isn't that funny? <laughs> oh, well, okay, that's about all, all I have time for. So back to you, Table top Topics Master.
Right, so the next table topic tonight is how to ignore arachnid interruptions uh, by thinking fast and slow. And I'd like to call my next victim, uh, I mean, Speaker Kartik, to talk about that. Uh, crikey. Um, okay, so thank you, Emma Painter. It's always good to hear about so many different tree names in a table topic. So Emma Painter. So, so, um, hold a dash, hang on. Right, where was so, uh, bold dash. So, uh, tree, tree names, trees. Uh, so, 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 uh, yeah, lots of trees. Where do I start? There's um, maples, there's acorn trees, uh, not even acorn trees, what are they called? Uh, horse chestnuts, there's lots of different trees. Who would have thought there's so many trees? I um, want to tell you about a few trees. So, um, so, the, so the trees, the big trees, there's big trees, there's little trees, there's lots of trees. There's lots of trees out there. I've got a walnut tree in the garden. Uh, so, um, come on, I think I've got something else in the filing cabinet for you. Hang on just a moment for another tree, just to share that with you. And then someone mentioned earlier today about the rule of tree, wasn't it? I heard rule of tree. So there's um, lots of trees. So I need to think of three trees. Can I think of three trees? So um, there's a, I can't even think of any trees. How can you think of any trees in table topics? But I think I'm not, am I up to my minute? I'm not sure. I'm just going to go and check on the trees. Hang on, I've got a manual in my filing cabinet. Sorry, everybody. Hang on a sec. No, I don't know where I put it. No idea. Boulder dash. Ah, I think I think I'm going to end on the role of tree, which is try and remember which which rung of your filing cabinet you put your trees in, so that you can share it with your favorite fellow tabletop masters. That's a uh, rule of tree. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Table topic table topics master. So, so the next topic. Tonight then is the rule of tree, and I'd like to ask Emma Painter to talk about that. So on the rule of tree, away you go, Emma Painter. <laughs> this Paul Dash is so confusing. Right, thank you, Cynthia, for such an insightful and romantic topic, clearly taking our proximity to Valentine's Day into full account there, Cynthia. Thank you. Valentine's Day, Valentine's Day. What can I say about Valentine's Day? Well, not much because of the fact that my husband works nights. But let me tell you about this. Or should I say, sing it. Somewhere over the rainbows, way up high. Oh, I guess I really shouldn't be singing they told me not to sing, right? My, my, my sister-in-law says, shh. My brother-in-law says, so what can I say? What can I say? What can I say? Well, my grandson made a Valentine's cake. It was yellow and chocolate. And I just love chocolate right now because I'm exercising and trying to lose the weight but that chocolate sure tasted good. A mouthful, spoonful of chocolate helps the medicine go down, the medicine go down, the medicine go down back to you. So the next topic tonight then is musicals the land of oz and the yellow cake road and i'd like to ask cynthia to talk about this topic so cynthia musicals the land of oz and the yellow cake road okay thank you andy it's amazing to cover lime scale in so much detail and doing it via the medium of a dog barking too truly amazing Andy. Thank you very much, Mark. Do I agree with the phrase, 
that a dog is a man's best friend. That's a very interesting question. Thank you very much, Mark. Now, I don't use a kettle because the kettle at my house is disgusting. It was covered last week, well, a fortnight ago. Nikki told us all about the lime scale. But what I do instead is I have a distiller because the water out the tap here, I can't even drink the water out the tap. So I was looking at my distiller and the distiller gets disgusting inside. You would not believe what's left after all the, the H2O has evaporated off. It really is the stuff that turns into the lime scale. Well, I'd run out of my cleaner. So what I had to do was rush off. It was dark late at night, but luckily I've got a Sainsbury's quite nearby, about a minute's jog, minute and a half's walk, brisk walk. Went off, everything was good. It was chilly outside, but I dressed up nice and warm, fantastic. Got, got up to Sainsbury's, got the product I needed to dissolve. I mean, it's dangerous chemicals, stuff that we shouldn't tell any environmentalist about, but it does dissolve the lime scale. And I was just getting back to my house. Oh my goodness, a minute and a half. Getting back to my house and boulder dash. I slipped in some dog's boulder dash. It was so annoying. So I'm afraid I do not, and I even walked in my house with it on. It was disgusting. I thought someone had a boulder dash. Can't say that either, but I had to leave my shoes outside. Fortunately, it was raining, so it kind of washed it off. But I'm afraid, Mark, I do not agree with the phrase, even though I love it when a dog makes that, mm, mm. Mm, you know, you, you, when you, you stroke a dog's belly, oh, that, that sound is music to my ears. So on one hand, yes, I do agree that a dog is a man's best friend. But on the other, I'm afraid the dog's boulder dash drives me insane. So no, thank you very much. So the first topic tonight is, do you agree that a dog is a man's best friend? And I'd like to ask Andy to talk about that. So on the topic of, do you agree that a dog is a man's best friend? Over to you, Andy. I'd love to say there's a theme to our table topics tonight, but all I could come up with really was uh, whimsy and entropy. So you'll have to treat those two imposters just the same. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much, Mr. Toastmaster. <laughs>